back on my lane, and this is a follow-up on the uh, lane risers uh, that I did on my 14-12-inch uh, uh, lane. Um, the reason why I wanted to mount it underneath the bed is because ideally what I'd like to do is, let me see if you're in the camera view. When I get my pulley here, with my gears, uh, with my pulleys, what I like to do is make this area somewhat of a tilt. Uh, maybe set it up on a hinge on the back, uh, put a bolt through with a spring uh, action in between, actually from the bottom, uh, keeping the spring action, uh, keeping the pull down. And the reason why I want to do this, I want to put a little lever here, and just a little bit of pressure that I'll be able to pull this up slightly to make it much easier to go between the uh, the uh, pulley uh, belt positions. So uh, the way it is right now, I'll be able to do it, so, you know, by forcing the belt over each uh, one of these loops. But my, my thought is that if I just alleviate a little bit of pressure on that, it will be a very smooth uh, moving of this uh, of these uh, pulleys back and forth. I'm back. A little interruption. Kids are cutting the grass, <laughs> so they wanted to pull the lawnmower in here while I was uh, doing this recording. But anyway, I uh, went back to the hardware. One, two inch, two inch pulley with a five eighth uh, shaft double that and the four inch pulley this one uh, they didn't have a four inch with a 5 8 so I'm gonna tap this out uh, drill it out to a 5 8 bore it's cast aluminum it will uh, be fairly uh, easy to uh, to drill so with this combination okay this on the motor shaft and this on the bottom pulley will reduce the speed in exactly half of the lathe, of the uh, speed. So with that and then going back to the, this pulley system, I can go back to every step at half of its speed. So the 535 RPMs will become, uh, what's 500? 635 RPMs will become 300 and 14, uh, I don't know, uh, 300 and uh, the shaft that I'm making up. Now, I wanted to go back to the original speeds that I listed over here. And I had picked up a crazy configuration, another five and another two and a half inch pull, which of course doesn't work. And no matter which way you set it up, you have to be able to maintain the same distance between this shaft and the motor or else you're going to have to alter the height of the motor or the height of the pulley and you, you can't do that you're kind of fixed in these uh, these positions but the way it works is I got two three inch pulleys so putting one of these on the motor and one of these uh, piggyback with this one the distance between these two pulleys should be equal to the distance of these two pulleys. So therefore not altering the, uh, the distance that I need. So uh, basically I got a two and a four which makes it a total of six inches and I got a three and a three which makes it a total of six inches. So if my thinking is correct I should be able to jump back and forth between the original speeds of the lathe and to half speeds of the lathe. Um, and so everything will be able to, uh, to follow up. And my thinking of course is that I'm going to be using uh, this configuration most of the time. Um, I just don't want to lose whatever features the lathe had uh, just because I did a riser kit. Uh, but I also wanted to make it safer by reducing the speed. So uh, the label that's here will be able to be uh, accurate with this configuration and then 
I know that half of that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, will be accurate with this configuration and half of that speed will be accurate with this, this configuration. So this is on a motor shaft, this is on a pulley shaft. Wrong again. Uh, these two will be on the motor shaft, these two will be on a pulley shaft. Now, wrapping it up, I'm trying to see, well, I was trying to see if I can fit the motor between this channel that's on the uh, laid bed. It's, uh, and they're a little bit tapered out, um, and the base of it is just about six inches at the very bottom, at the widest part of the flange. And the, the motor uh, plate, the, the mounting plate, is just under six inches. So right now I know that it's at a height that will uh, be able to work for me because th this center will be over here of this pulley. Uh, it's uh, fairly tight, so what I want to do is already unbolted my lathe so I can knock it uh, back out of the way, uh, tilt it on its back, and be able to drill the four holes that I need on the top of this and pull that motor up. And to pull it up and to keep it solid so it's not rocking, I will fill up whatever difference I need in between the bed and where I can't get the motor up anymore. I know that this is not that hard, hard of a metal, so I'll be able to slide it up maybe, maybe about three quarters of an inch up on that, and I'll probably need the shim on the top of that, another three quarters of an inch to make it solid between the two. And that will give me ample uh, room. So let me tilt this out of the way, and let me show you the progress on the next step. Okay, I'm back. And with a little bit of effort and elbow work, uh, I was able to mount the motor underneath the bed. Uh, I must say, it just made it under there. Uh, put myself in a predicament uh, that was pretty tight, pretty tough to get to these two back bolts. But I got it in, the motor is good and sturdy. So, time to get to the uh, bed back uh, laid up. Uh, I've been able to uh, put the motor, mount it on the lead. Uh, it was a little bit of work. Locked myself up in a way that I couldn't read off. And this one is set up with a keyway. I don't need to use, uh, have to use the keyway because it's got an Allen wrench and I can just put the Allen key into that area. So the first thing I gotta do is drill this one out. Make sure I center it. This work I've been uh, really anxious to get this going and uh, between yesterday and today um, I finally did the camshaft but the tool rest is something that I had to work on. Uh, 
And here's what I did. I uh, <clears throat> okay, so anyway, what I did here is I took a 5 8 rod and I put it inside the banjo itself, locked it up, and heated this area up. Got a nice tight bend on that. Then uh, once that cooled off a little bit, I started heating up this area right here and achieved another 90 degree cut on that as well. Now, this is all modifications and it's bound to change if I ever get a good deal on a, a, a large banjo or if I'm ever in the mood and make one up. I know that I could make one up out of a, a steel stock, square stock or a, a, a three inch cast pipe, uh, black pipe, um, two and a half inch, whatever this is, uh, cut it in half, weld the two ends, make a shaft with an offset uh, on the end and I'd be able to make it up regardless. Um, the only uh, drawback of what's holding me up from doing that is really I'm not a steel worker, a metal worker. And I did have a little uh, uh, MIG welder but that stopped working. So I can forget about, not that I would MIG this, this is cast, and you can't MIG weld cast, uh, I understand. Uh, but if I was going to make one out of steel, well, you know, I could do a lot of weldings uh, uh, and different things. But because I raised my lathe to 17 inches, banjo all the way out over here on a straight run with a, your typical uh, tool rest, well, from here, it only gives me a 6-inch span over here, making it a 12-inch. So, I wouldn't be able to make this band out. And I had a small tool rest that I cut up from an old, uh, old lathe. And what I did is I actually tapped this out. I uh, drilled it out. I went with uh, different bits, started off with a little under a quarter, then went a little over a quarter, and so on. And I did it in... Uh, uh, four step drill bit to a final five eighths and tapped a quarter a quarter twenty on the end over here so, so I can tighten it up and it's not pretty but it's uh, will do and it will lock it up and that's really my main concern so now the lathe is running that it's a little bit noisier but I think that was expected. Here's what I show you what I did. Okay let me move that up. Well, I, actually, I cleaned up the uh, whole lathe, and I think it looks a lot better. As you know, the motor was originally down here, and it had this pulley on the motor, this uh, four-step pulley, which is the original from the Atlas, which gave me those speeds uh, from uh, uh, 635 RPM to 40... 680? Something like that. Uh, RPMs. So what I did is I made a counter shaft. I went to the local hardware store and picked up four pulleys. Uh, three of them I was able to get with a five inch bore. One of them they didn't have the five eighths and I didn't want to wait, I didn't want to order. So I got a half inch and I just, again, put it to the drill press. Every speed, as in, uh, it's indicated on the spindle speeds on the lathe itself. But the main reason why I did all of this is I wanted to reduce the speed in half. So I got a 2 inch pulley here and a 4 inch pulley here. So that should be exactly 
half of everything that's listed over there. So when I start up the lathe, I should be on the slow speed. Uh, that's 315, 316 uh, uh, RPMs, uh, roughly. And that's what this is right now. Now, show how it arises. I was able to come up pretty cool. I was going to put a hinge and I'm not done so I might still put a hinge on this base over here uh, and the reason why I would put a hinge on that okay if I put this on a hinge so it's just like it was before I go to the top drop it down on one pulley as soon as I do that well, actually I still have this loose now I can go to any speeds over here okay, okay so uh, that's uh, number two uh, and so on and so forth actually let me uh, lock that up uh, that was in there just with uh, some of the glue that I used up when I was uh, making this up so it was stuck a little bit and